we're going to do an assessment of the Royal Tiger Vetterly TS or carbine uh, fiasco. Um, the reason I make these videos, uh, it's my hobby. It's what I do for fun. And uh, the reason I did this video on the Vetterlies is I happen to like these guns and collect them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what I did here in this whole series. And I'll give you my honest opinion on it. And I know the comment sections are open. There's all kinds of opinions and shit going on. But I think it's best for me also to explain. Now, I made some videos in the past telling you I may have to stop doing the YouTube stuff. Uh, well, that still can be an issue. The thing is, the way things are going, I had a period of time where I'm waiting on things. Okay? I have some time to make some videos. I had the opportunity when it came with Royal Tiger to do a purchase and assessment on these guns. Now, would I do the same thing with any other type of batteries at Royal Tiger Head? No. Would I buy refurbished M1 Garands or French rifles or anything else they're offering? I think they even offer refurbished K98. Uh, no, I would not purchase them. Uh, why? Because the reason I got involved with Royal Tiger and these guns, it's an unusual gun, it's a hard to find gun, and it's something that I am personally interested in. The other things they offer there, I'm not quite interested in them. But I will advise you guys, pay attention to this video, and I'm going to give you my honest assessment of this, and that way you can make the decision on your own, all right, whether you want to deal with this company or not, and I'll just tell you honestly how it all works out. And then you can form your own conclusion or whatever. But it'll give you an idea. So if you do wish to, and again, take the risk. I mean, whenever we talk about buying mill surplus, people use the term like I use the term double down. Okay, this is a gambling term when you play blackjack. Okay, double down. Or double down on something means, well, if you went so far, throw some more money at it to see how it comes out. Okay? A lot of people use the term, I rolled the dice, which is another gambling term. It means I've taken a chance and see where come what may. You really shouldn't have to use this terminology when you're dealing with buying an in-stock product from a reputable company it is accurately describing what you are getting. Okay? So, bear that in mind. Now, let's see what I ended up with. And let me give you just an assessment of the weapons that I got. Alright, these particular models of the Vetterly, okay, are somewhat rare and hard to find. The other models, the long rifle and the 6.5s, are actually quite common, very easy to find, and if you buy from anyone other than Royal Tiger, for the same amount of money, you can find an example of those guns in a lot better condition for less money. If you look around and are patient, know what you're doing, and take your time, okay? The problem with the surplus market now is nobody wishes to work at it or take your time or assess it. And getting one or two examples to put in what I would call a type collection uh, is understandable. And I've known people that have bought things. It is a type collection. It is not an in-depth collection where, like with this, I'm going for hard to find unusual models that generally will cost you more unless you're lucky and somebody is selling the thing and doesn't know what the hell it is. All right. This is all part of collecting. 
and how far you want to get into it. So, what all started off is when they offered these guns. This is the one at the top. Okay, now this particular model, uh, I paid 800 bucks for. Now, the condition of this gun, all right, is by Royal Tiger terms, mint condition, all right. There isn't a damaged thing on it. The stock serial number matches the receiver serial number. So the gun is all original, no replaced things, no nails holding nothing. I believe the only thing that is improper is this rear sight, I believe. It looks like a rifle sight. That might not be the right sight on there. I don't think any of these guns, other than the junk one, has the correct rear sight on it. And there are no markings on this. Okay. But the bore is very good. The gun functions. And another thing is, what people don't realize, most of these guns have a rounded trigger guard. Now, the guy that wrote the book on it says there are, and he doesn't have a photograph of a gun like this. He said there will be variations where you will find the spur trigger guard on the TS carbine, which is unusual. And this fills a niche in my collection and gives me an example of this piece or this particular model gun that the guy who wrote an extensive book on it doesn't have a photograph of it. He just mentions it. So... Is this gun worth what I paid? Yes. If all the guns in the lot were like this, and you paid $800 for it, you would have made out okay. I was curious, because right after I bought this, there was a price drop of $300 a gun. Which, it's not $100, $150, it's $300. So I said, did they send me the best weapon out of the examples they had. That, to answer that question is probably yes. So, I said, let me buy two of the $500 price guns. Now, one of them shows up, you know, cracking the stock, minor, nothing terrible, has the uh, colonial stamping in the stock, I cannot find the serial number on this to know if this is original. It is the correct stock. It is complete. It is in fairly good Okay, it is not in as good condition as the first rifle. Okay. And also, I believe this is a 6.5 rear sight, which is incorrect. The uh, It has some sort of markings on there okay overall slightly uh, the condition is slightly less than the first one okay for the different points I made wrong site it does have markings that are Ethiopian and puts it in a thing that this will be readily identified as coming from that cache from where it came from which is unique in itself and one thing that Royal Tiger is selling is something that you can't find that easily anywhere else and also the bore is got some rust and pitting in it uh, you know which the bore on this is fair on a more expensive model is fairly clean and very good condition all the guns are worn okay so at five hundred dollars this gun I can safely say is worth it you know, incorrect sight, a couple minor defects, and the bore not exactly stellar. So, that gun was worth it. And if all the rest of them were like that, and I think i seen one other individual that got one. He didn't really specify on the bore. But he does have another set of unusual Ethiopian markings on his example, which are different from the ones that I had. So, let's go on to the last one. Okay, the last gun. This here is a conglomeration of parts and something slapped together to look like ATS carbon. The receiver is actually loose from the barrel and this is basically a non-functioning repaired 
piece of junk that kind of closely resembles a Vetterly carbine, but I would not call it that because it is an assemblance of broken parts on a stock from another gun which was carved up to put this rifle together. This is the correct rear sight. On all the guns, this is the one that has a correct carbine rear sight. As you see, there's a gap there. Or on the other gun, that rear sight protrudes back almost to the edge of the receiver. That is not the correct sight. Alright, the bore on this is pretty good. But the bolt is not a 10.4 millimeter bolt. And there's nails holding things on to the handcrafted stock. And this gun has weld repairs and everything. But surprisingly enough, I believe that magazine would function if this gun was shootable. So, basically you have some parts. You have some other type of different Ethiopian inscription on it. And unfortunately, this was a loss. I'm saying it 250 is a stretch for a parts gun is probably what it's worth. So I lost on this one in my double down dare. Alright, so everybody goes, why did you deal with Royal Tiger again after I made some pretty critical uh, videos about them, kind of warning people not to really deal with them. Uh, so, let's recap. What I know from when they first come out and what I've seen now is there has been some improvements uh, with Royal Tiger. They kind of didn't package stuff well in the beginning, but now they put an effort forward of doing it. The expensive gun came packaged first class. These cheaper ones, there was a little bit less attention paid to the packing of the guns. So, this company, very iffy. Uh, their website is set up, so when I buy the antiques, in the past I bought antiques from them, and, you know, they wait a week, oh, send us a copy of your driver's license, blah, 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 and all this. So now I have a customer number. My photocopy of my driver's license is there in their computer, and when I order an antique, it just gets sent to me seven business days. Okay. Now, when you do business with them, and in the past I've seen several people, PA gun guy, this guy here has bought a ton of stuff from them, and there are several other people out there, okay, that have bought things just to say they've done it, all right? And it depends on what you're buying from them, okay? Um... The thing about it is when you sign the agreement that you agree to their terms and conditions, their terms or conditions are once they get your money, you're not getting your money back. And there's several people that got some real trashed out K98s and tried sending them back and say, hey, I don't want this with a crack in the wrist. I don't want, you know, I want, and they send them something completely similar back. And there are people that have bought some unusual guns from them. I've really not seen anyone that has bought a Gavera 88 or Carbine make a video. But I have seen some other people buy some odd guns that the boards were totally shot out. I mean, bad, bad. I mean, I, that one uh, Austrian uh, rifle I bought from them, the rust in there was horrific to where... Uh, the corrosion was heavy and you just, it was the bore shot, okay? Uh, somebody was saying, well, you know, counterboard. I had a 30 inch barrel, I'm gonna counterboard eight inches from the muzzle down, okay? It, it ain't gonna work. Um, now there's a difference between rust, like this second gun has some rust and corrosion, but you can still see rifling. What it was, somebody fired corrosive ammo, didn't clean. And that's what that residue is. It's kind of nasty, but it isn't quite horrible as some of the examples I've seen, which the corrosion itself is so heavy that it constricts the bore. 
I'm not talking about a coating of rust. I'm not talking about corrosive priming residue kind of eating in. I'm talking starting grew in there to where it actually expands out, the oxidation and corrosion. I've never seen nothing like that in my life. So, knowing this, and I made detailed videos of each of these guys, all three of them, okay? A lot of people told me I should call back Royal Tiger, tell them to at least give me a 10.4 millimeter bolt to put in there, and all this other stuff. Well, a lot of these places when they're selling these guns, they don't have spare parts. They don't have an extra bolt. Okay. They take this junk as they found it and sell it to you. And according to their agreements, they are never going to refund my money. I doubt very much they'd send me another bolt. Okay. Because once they got my money, they don't care. All right. Now, I could be like some people and insist sending them the gun back for an exchange, which probably would cost me more money, shipping and all this other stuff, but they don't have any of these to exchange back to me. And I doubt they have the bulk. But since my subscribers' insistence on trying to get the company to make this right, I did go and send an email with the order number and explained what's wrong, and I said, what are my options? I sent this email off in there, nice, brand new, organized thing, and I have not yet gotten a reply, and from several people who have emailed complaints, they said that they never get a reply from the emails, okay, especially when you're talking about returning the gun or problems. They don't answer those emails. Now, I could go and call and talk to a service representative. Now, these people, when you call, are on a defensive. When you start talking about board condition, they get really antsy and that. And uh, I kind of don't believe that calling them will resolve anything and it's just more of a waste of my time and if they ever did offer to resolve or do something to smooth this over it would end up costing me more money so in my little hiatus here and i had the time it's probably going to be my last uh hurrah here with uh youtube because uh, things in my life may change and I won't be making videos, for real. And I'm not going to waste my time. I know everyone said, oh, do this. It, it's a waste of time, okay? I knew the people I was dealing with. I know how they are. And from what other people's experiences when a situation like this happens, okay, they're going to just drag on some of these guys when they got stuff like this were persistent in calling and they're not just royal tiger there was a couple other companies uh one is uh the hell is it i can't remember the name of it. it's down there in the southern part of north carolina but oh classic firearms same thing he's calling them hey make the bolt good the bolt's destroyed uh, make good the bolt. And this went on for months and months and months and money and they're telling them to send them more money. And I don't really think it ever kind of got resolved or the bolt that they did send them didn't fit in that gun or something, you know. So you should walk away with the lesson, okay? I was in a position to do this. I got burned. I'm just going to write it off as a loss, okay, and do something with the material I got left. All right. Um, if this happened to me with a more common weapon, like some of the other things, that I would I would like it. But I knew better. Okay. The only reason I did it is because I have a personal interest in this model and type of fire. Okay. Um, it's what I do. It's my hobby. Okay. It's not for money or what do I'm going to get out of it. And and yes. I've lost money, okay, plain and simple. And spending more time and getting aggravated and arguing with these shysters over, you know, this 
Okay, that's why I said it was a double down. I did it for content and plus to teach you guys a lesson. Okay, and a lot of people comment out there, I would not spend my, then don't. That's why I make the video. If this video helps you make the decision not to do any business whatsoever with these people, then that's a pretty good decision, you know. But, like I said, there are a lot of people that will keep buying from them, and I have, even though when I warn people not to, um, because you're in a gray area, all right? There's something of interest, but you know the people you're dealing with aren't exactly, you know, above board. And yes, you're taking a risk. And sometimes you do kind of come out ahead, and sometimes you don't. It's kind of like they see this. They, they give you some good stuff, and then they give you crappy shit, and, you know, with no way to return it or, or, or exchange it. Okay? That's just the way this company runs. All right? And in the hobby, in collecting, and all this other stuff, uh, and it doesn't matter what you collect, guns, cars, paintings, whatever the hell. Okay? You're going to find deals and, and stuff and trickery and that. It's just your knowledge on the subject, be it these veterinary style guns, M1 Grands, M1 Carbines are offering, your knowledge on the guns is critical in order to make a decision. And if you don't like the way the company does business, because if you get burned, you ain't got no way of getting out of it, and don't do business with them. Pretty simple. What I'm trying to tell you is you have to think for yourself. Don't use my video or other people's video as a guide or their opinion, okay, to make a critical decision. Use it and then try to read in between the lines and figure out for yourself and proceed with caution, okay? And those of you that just don't want to deal with any of this nonsense, you know, stay away from it. don't buy none. Okay? Pretty simple. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, and stay tuned, and I will keep making videos as long as I can.